Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 11 of our C Sharp for Automation testing video series. And in this video, I'll be talking about iteration statements. And before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 10 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. All right, so what is this iteration statements? Remember in our previous video, we'll be talking about different kinds of statements C Sharp has got like conditional statements, iteration statements, exception handling statements, etc. And this is the iteration statement that we're going to talk about. So using iteration statement, we can loop our code to a number of specified time. It's also subject to the loop termination criteria though. Here are the following iteration statements of keywords available. One is uh, the do statement, for statements, for each and in statements, while statement. So these are the different kinds of looping statements available in C Sharp. And we will talk for and for each loop uh, as well as while loop a lot rather than do loop because do loop is something which uh, which will actually perform an operation before actually looping. So uh, it's kind of different thing, but, uh, but the most useful operation that we do most of the time in the automation testing world of C Sharp is the for, for each and uh, while loop. All right, so what is this for, is for loop? The for loop has this syntax, for, and it has a uh, type, and the type variable, which can be, uh, which can be anything. In, here, in this case, a type is int, and the i is the variable, and equals zero, so it starts from a zero, or one, or two, whatever you want, you're specifying, and it will loop till the condition. The condition here is i less than 10, so it will loop till, nine, right? So I starts from zero and it loops I less than 10 and I plus plus, which means it's incrementing the value. So I is equal to zero. So it starts with the loop of I is equal to zero and I less than 10. So we know that the first time it loops, the I is going to be zero, which is less than 10. So it starts looping. So console.write line print number is equal to print number is going to be zero. That's the output there. And i is equal to one, it's gonna print, and it's gonna print till i as a nine. And once i becomes 10, after the i plus plus, you can see that it's not gonna print that value out because our condition is not gonna satisfy. If you want to print the 10 as well, then you should use something like i less than or equal to 10, or i starts from one, right? Something like that. That's the, that's the for loop. Let's see something realistic in terms of automation in a while loop. Let's say most of the time we'll be encountering this kind of situation where the element it will not be visible in the UI of your application and you want to wait till a specified seconds available in your, uh, in your code. So here, what I have did is I've written a code simple, something like this, element not visible is equal to true. So currently the element is not visible and the mock number of second. So here, the number of second, I'm not using the system.thread rather it's a mock number of seconds, it starts with zero. And I'm just gonna loop using a while loop, right? And here the while loop will always uh, execute if the statement is true. And the statement element not visible is equal to true this time. That's why it's gonna go our code block, console.write line. And here it says number of seconds waiting, which is, uh, which is zero, right? And then, we are verifying if the mock number of seconds is equal to four. So I'm forcibly saying that my UI is gonna appear after four seconds. And it checks if the of the seconds is four. Of course, it is zero for this time. And the element not visible is equal to false, will not be executed. And then mock number of second plus plus, which means I'm incrementing. Remember the for loop that we saw before, it has the I plus plus. Similarly, I'm doing a mock number of second plus plus, which means I'm incrementing the variable's value mock number of seconds here, all right? So this is something which I'm doing intentionally to increase the number of seconds as if your system time has been increasing, all right? And then again, the loop starts and it will again increment the value mock number of seconds to two, the three, and it becomes four. But this time, the if condition will be executed and the element not visible value will become false once it becomes false, you know what happens? The while loop will not execute. It just comes out of the loop and then it prints out the value. So the output is gonna look something like this. Starts with zero and it prints till four. It will not print five. The reason is because the loop will not be executed. So this is how you perform a 
while looping operation uh, using C sharp. So this is what is for loop and while loop. While we go through the course of C sharp, we will be talking about uh, for each loop, maybe in the next video where we'll be talking about arrays. So we'll be using the for each loop as well. All right, so let's see this in action and we'll see how things works. So for that, I'm gonna flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same code which we were working on our previous video and this time I'm really not interested with the conditions operators or condition statements. So I'm just going to remove this guy completely and here what I'm going to do I'm just going to write a very very super simple for loop code. So the for loop code what I'm going to do let's say if I want to uh, perform my test case uh, to be executed 10 times. Uh, remember there are some situations where you will be pulling some data from an excel sheet and you want to iterate all the 10 values within your excel sheet and you want to verify if that particular uh, 10 data has been executed completely or not there are some situations where people have asked me how to perform these kinds of situations. very very simple all you have to do is for loop and remember the double tap operation that we have in our c sharp in our visual studio ide just for and you can see there is a code snippet for for loop tap twice to insert the for snippet if i just tap twice you can see that it automatically brings me the the statements full structure and it says length here which of course doesn't exist so we have to specify the length so here i'm going to specify a length as 10 meaning execute this loop 10 times and just write console.write line the number of times or time is something like this and I can see just I here and you can as I already said you can change any value within this I you can be it can be a J or a K or it can be a num or row whatever whatever you want you can specify it right here and then you can just execute this and now if I execute this code remember the same output that we saw in our slide that exactly is coming here we just took less than five seconds to write this piece of code and it's executing right that's because of the double tap operation of course visual studio ide is very very intelligent enough to tell you what you have to do you can also create some custom snippets which is completely out of scope of this course but you can also do that you can write your own snippets and you can insert it and you can do a double tap that will insert stuff for you right all right so it's just a sideline and then once this operation is done for the for for loop as we already said you can do a less than or equal to and if you print this time you can also see the number of time is 10 will also be printed right that's because we are saying the condition here so so this is the assigning of a variable this is the condition to check for the variable if that is being satisfied and this is the increment operation so basically within a for loop you will have assigning condition and then you have an increment so that's what exactly is happening remember in the while loop we saw that's what it is so the code that we saw in the while loop is this code so here the element not visible is equal to true mark number of second is equal to zero and element not visible i'm just specifying the true that's the reason it's going to execute this code and it will execute till the four is being uh being satisfied and the element not visible will be false so that the while loop will be terminated and it will out of the loop right so now if i try to execute this code commenting this piece of code because it's going to be a mess after the code will be executed so now if i execute you can see that this particular output will be appearing and now let's say if i don't specify this piece of code let's command this code you will see that you will really ruin your piece of code this time oh my god just keep on executing it that's the reason uh, but of course c sharp has got its own uh, killer zone where it will kill the unnecessary looping stuff after a while uh, but it can easily put your machine in trouble uh, if you're using a celeron processor of course some people might even not hear about the celeron process and kind of stuff those are the days while your machine will hang if you use a while loop completely uh, completely not wrong way as I'm doing right now see it's looking like a matrix movie keep on incrementing the value just close it so just don't do that try to make your while loop to be under your control if you don't really satisfy your while loop then your while loop is going to be running completely infinitely or indefinitely and your code will be in trouble so make sure your while loop is completely taken care right so this is how you can perform the operation 
So that's it guys, these are the different kinds of iteration or the looping statements available in C Sharp. In the next video we'll be talking about arrays and in that video we'll be talking about for each loop as well. So thank you very much for watching this video once again and have a great day.